Hello and welcome to uh, the latest in this series of tutorials for Excel beginners. It's been quite a while since the last one, but uh, I thought I'd start making a few more and this year I hope to make quite a lot more tutorials, so stay tuned. In this tutorial I'm going to look at the nested if function, uh, a last look, and I just wanted to show you something that I meant to show you in the previous video but didn't explain it probably too well, and that is the order that things are placed in when you create a function that requires more than two outcomes. Now if we look at this basic if function here which we created in an earlier tutorial you'll see it has a fairly basic structure and it simply checks to see if the the venue is sold out and if it is put a message on saying sold out and if not simply say seats available. So it's just checking for one possible outcome. In other words is is the sell value 100% or not. Now, what I would like to have happen in this cell is three possible outcomes, and those would be sold out. Um, if the ticket sales are, let's say, below the 100, I want to have the word promote appear. And if they're between 100 and 149, I'm going to have the words last few seats appear. Um, so, obviously, you can have more messages than that, but just for this example, that will do. So, what do we need to do? Okay, well if you saw the last tutorial then you'll know how to create the nested if function, which is what we're going to do here, but what wasn't clear on the previous tutorial is how you order the different parts, so I want to explain that a little bit better here. So I'm going to first of all delete the existing if function, and I'm going to create a new function that does what I want. So we're going to create the function and click in the cell where you want the result to appear, as I have done there, and we'll just start to type out equals if, open bracket, and I'm going to first check on the uh, the sales, see if it's actually sold out. So click on C7 and see if that equals 150. Type a comma to separate the parts of the function, and if it is sold out, I'm simply going to have the words sold out appear type a comma again. Now at this stage on a normal if function I would type out the bit that I wanted to appear if it wasn't correct. However this time I want to ask a second question and that second question is going to be created by typing the word if again and an open bracket again. So you're almost creating a new if function if you like. And this time I'm going to refer to the same cell and now I want to know if it's a hundred ticket sales or above. And so I'm going to simply say is it greater than 99. Now if that's true, type a comma again and open quotes, I'm going to have the words last few seats appear. There we go. Close quote. So that's my second question and that last few seats is what I want to have appear if that is true. In other words, if the ticket sales are um, above 100 or 100 or above, but below 150. And then the last part is simply the message that if neither of those two things are true, what will I have appear? And that will simply be the message to promote. So I'm going to type a comma, and then between quotes the word promote to indicate we need to do a bit of work to sell more tickets. Close quote. And then because I've got, if we have a look at the function now, I've got an open bracket for the first if function. I have an open bracket for the second if function. And so I need to type two close brackets at the end. I know I covered that previously, but it's worth remembering that you need to match the closing bracket or the closing parentheses to your opening parentheses. Otherwise, it won't work. I think Excel pops up a message and might even do it automatically for you anyway, but it's good practice to uh, try and remember to do it yourself. That's my advice anyway. OK, so I'm going to press Enter to see if it works. Now, we get the message sold out appearing there and so I'm going to try a few different variations. What if we've only sold 50 tickets? What do we get? We get the word promote appear. If we sell 100 tickets we get the message last few seats and if we sell 150 tickets we get the message sold out. So that's actually working quite nicely. Now if we go back to look at the function the thing I wanted to emphasize was the order in which I've asked those questions. So the first question is have we sold out? The second question is, is it 100 sales or above, but obviously below 150? And the final question is essentially, is it below 100, i.e. 1 to 9 or 0 to 99? So 
if I change the order of those things, will it change the outcome of the function? Does it matter? Well, the answer is yes, it does. But I want to create a function where I put the order the wrong way around, and you'll see a little bit better how it can go wrong. So I'm going to go to the next cell down. I'm going to create a new function. So equals if. And again, click on C8 because I'm in the next row. And this time, I'm going to see if it's maybe above 99, first of all. So is C8 greater than 99? Type a comma. And my message there was last few seats. Close quote. Type a comma again. And now I'm going to do the second part of my nested if, which is to type if again. Open bracket again. Click on the relevant cell C8. And this time I'll see if it's sold out. So is it equal to 150? Type a comma. And we're going to type sold out. Obviously, so you can see it. it not sold hour, just to return that, sold out. <laughs> so you can see it's subtly different. I've just reversed the first two questions, and then the final part again will be to have the word promote appear, close bracket, twice. Okay, press enter. Okay, well, it seems to be working at the moment because it says uh, promote for ticket sold 95. Okay, what about if we get to 100? sales we get last few seats that's wonderful and what if we sell out right okay well that's obviously gone wrong there because it still says last few seats and it should say sold out so in a real life scenario we could end up selling tickets for seats that are no longer available a disaster so why has that one not worked the simple answer is if you look at it logically you will see that Excel has, has done what we asked it to. We said is C8 greater than 99 and if so put the words last few seats in there. So if you think about it it will never ever bother to check if it's 150 because 150 is obviously above 99. So Excel stops the function when it finds something that's true. It never ever bothers to go beyond that. So the first thing it does is look at the cell it's all right it says 150 but it's also above 99 so I've been told to put last few seats in above 99 end of function thank you very much and that's the end of the, res the the process if you look at the previous one the one that actually works the first question is is it sold out so it's testing the high value first if the high value isn't correct and if I just change that value down to say one 125 then Excel moves on. So it says, let's go back to the function again. So it says, okay, it's not 150, what do we do next? And then it says, okay, is it above 99? And that's the second highest test, if you like, and then it puts last few seats in. If that's not true, and if I go back and change that value again to say 50, just come back and look at the function again, it puts promote in. So basically, it will simply continue through the function until it finds something that's correct. And one, once it finds something that's correct, it basically ends the function. So keep that in mind when you create these nested functions, when you're testing numeric values, to put them in the correct order, otherwise it simply won't work. The best, you could do it different ways depending on whether you use greater than or less than, but my personal preference is to check the high values first and then move on to the lower values. Uh, now if you're testing text values, it doesn't make any difference because it doesn't matter whether, so let's say I'm looking to check for the word Fred then it doesn't matter whether I put the word Fred at the beginning of the nested if function or at the end, it'll only stop when it finds the word Fred, so clearly that is a different situation, which is why the previous example worked no matter which way around we, we worded it, because we were looking for a different, uh, different test. So it's only applicable on numeric tests, but uh, something that's worth bearing in mind. Okay, well that concludes this tutorial. Just to let you know that my plans are to produce an awful lot more tutorials this year. Um, hundreds, potentially, but at least a hundred, I hope. And that will cover more Excel tutorials, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and also I've had a lot of people ask me about Microsoft Access, and so I'll be looking to create some Access tutorials in the next few weeks. Um, I'll also be looking at other software programs including Photoshop and one or two others which I haven't decided yet but if you have any particular requests then by all means put them in the uh, the comments section below this video or you can send me a message directly I don't mind which um, and I will add it to my list of things to look at so hope you found this video useful thank you for your comments and messages um, 
by all means keep subscribing and I uh, hope to see you in the next video.